Previously on GCN, we visited Bamford Clough in the Peak District, England, a road that could potentially be the steepest in the world. So steep, it's almost impossible to ride up it. I failed last time and was embarrassed by hill climb pros Dan and Jess Evans. I seriously underestimated how tough and steep this climb is. So I've modified my bike and I'm back to use tech to conquer this horrific climb. Last time I came here, I foolishly brought my standard bike and didn't change anything at all. It was fitted with a 5339 chain set and an 1130 cassette, which meant my easiest gear was a 3930. And for those of you who don't speak bike nerd, that is quite a hard gear and, well, for me, totally inadequate for how steep this beast is. It's ridiculous. I seriously underestimated this climb and well, I'm, I'm quite proud to be able to say that this is the only climb I've done where it's defeated me and I had to get off and walk. It's that hard. And what makes it hard is what you can see behind me, it's like 20, 25% here on this section and it never goes below 20%. And then up there in that direction, it maxes out at a sustained gradient of, well, over 36%. They say 36 and a half percent. So that's more than one in three. It's absolutely savage. It's not the longest climb in the world, but this steep section is relentless. There's no respite at all. Some climbs that vie to be the, the steepest or the hardest in the world, they have a really steep section, but then they have flatter bits where you can catch your breath and get respite. And it's only really steep for a short period. This, brutal. But that's not all that makes it hard. It's pretty narrow, which means you can't lessen the gradient by weaving across the road, as some people do. You've also got these slippery drainage ditches that just are scattered all the way up the climb. And then you've got lots of leaf litter and twigs all over the place, which did for me last time because it makes the surface pretty slippy. And when it's so steep, traction becomes a problem. To counter this, as mentioned, I've modified my bike. And the first thing I've done is change my tires. Last time I used 25 millimeter tires, and traction was a problem. My rear wheel just kept slipping on the steep, slippy road surface, and that made it really difficult. So I've gone wider, up to 30 millimeters on both the front and the rear, and because they're wider, I can run them at lower pressure too. So rather than the 70 PSI I had last time, I'm running these at down more like 40 PSI, which is lower than what I would normally run them if I was just going for a normal bike ride. But for how steep this climb is, I'm hoping that causes them to deform more and just grips the road surface a bit better. I've also changed my gearing. This is my trusty Orbea Orca OMX in Team GCN colors, so matches the kit. There are others like it, but this one is mine. Now it's fitted with SRAM Red Access gears and it's got a 4835 chain set on the front. And ordinarily it has a 1028 cassette on the back. However, I've swapped that out for a 1033 SRAM Force cassette, which gives me a significantly easier gear at the low end. I'm gonna also remove all the unnecessary affectations and weight from my bike. That's not all. I've also acquired a broom, which I definitely didn't steal from the storage cupboard at GCM Megabase, to sweep all the slippy leaves off the road. Yeah, this is gonna make all the difference. Just getting going on this climb is ridiculous. It's super steep right at the bottom here. Um, so that's why I'm holding onto this thing precariously. I'm gonna set off now, um, but by all means vote. Will I make it up the world's steepest climb this time? Um, yes or no? Right, let's uh, see if I can actually set off. Okay. I probably should have swept this bit. I didn't think sweeping this bit. Oh. All right. No. I'm gonna ride through there. Slippy. Not clipped in. Not clipped in. Need more speed. I, I was trying to start further up there. 
it wasn't happening for me. Turns out it's quite hard to get going on 20% gradients. So I've come further down to this point where I can get going and the road's much wider and not quite as steep, but it does make the climb even longer for me because I've got a nice bit of 10% to, to start me off. Brilliant. Bye, see if we can do it. <laughs> Already in my easiest gear. We're off. Oh God, that is something else. That is the hardest climb I've ever done on a bike in my entire life. That is brutal. Just give me a minute. To give this context, I've ridden the Mortarolo, the Anglerou, the Zonkalon, Climbs that are regarded to be the hardest in pro cycling. At 500 metres long, this is much shorter than those, but averaging 25% is without doubt the hardest I've ever tackled. If you can get up this, you can get up anything. The climb took me five minutes with an average power of 335 watts, although I deliberately held back as much as I could so that I could surge to 500 watts on the steepest and hardest section towards the end. I wasn't trying to get up there fast. I was just trying to get up. The speed you go is the speed you go. <laughs> Like, if you know of a harder climb than that, like, let us know in the comments section and, um, well, we'll probably come visit you and make a, a video about it, hopefully, that'd be good. Ideally, like, yeah, climbs in really hot, like, nice, beautiful places would be, would be great. Um, and I know what you're thinking, like, wow, that Castelli kit you're wearing is, like, rather smart. Where can I get some? Well, <laughs> you're in luck. It's available in Shop.Global Cycling Network. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, and watching me um, <coughs> struggle away, then you know what to do. Thumbs up, subscribe, and um, I'll see you in the next one. Whew. Love you. Bye. Oh, going down is not much easier. It's like... Uh.